So, will I be a success the day after tomorrow? What does that actually mean? Well, I think we've got to start is, what is success? So success, the way I see it is, it's very difficult to be a permanent success. You know, to be successful all your life or everything that you do, or every day. It's more, the way I see it, it's more of an event. It happens, you take that, you cherish it, you enjoy it, and then you try and move on and improve yourself and then gain another success. So you carry on becoming successful by having lots of moments and events of success. In terms of measuring success, how do you measure success? Success is going to be measured in many kind of different ways. Is it just about money? Is it, you know, is it just about enjoyment? What is it really about? I think the only time I really learned that was probably what, seven, eight years ago? When I first started in the business support field, I actually met someone um, called Rohit, and this is no word of a lie, he wanted to become a poet. He wanted to become a poet, seriously, this is uh, it's no joke, it was, first, it was my first client, and I just thought, business advisor, I've got to make people money. Or if they're already making money, I've got to make them more money. This is what I'm meant to do, this is why I'm here, let's go and do this. I went to see Rohit, Rohit, and we discussed things like, you know, maybe going to schools, um, doing workshops, but not going into English literature and doing poetry, because there's no point in that. I said to him, how about working on, I don't know, common themes, what's going on in the world at, at the moment, teaching about gun crime, knife crime, things like that, so, uh, but giving it a poetry slant, so they were able to relate more, but in a fun way. And then one of the things I said to him was, so Rohit, the poet, um, who do you aspire to be? And, you know, so we were talking about Shakespeare and Ken. I want to be like, okay, come on, Rory, tell me, tell me. I want to be like Dreadlock Alien. I was like, what? Dreadlock Alien? Who's Dreadlock Alien? And he goes, that's the person I aspire to be. He does all the things we talked about just now and more. He does it with arts organizations, he gets money from the Arts Council. He's the person I want to be. He has CDs, you know, he's everywhere. And I thought, wow, this is the guy he wants to be. I've not heard of him, but he must be on some serious money. So Rohit, tell me, how much does Dreadlock Alien actually earn? So here I am thinking 80,000, 100,000. And he said to me, oh, Ricky, that guy, he's got to be on at least, come on Rohit, tell me, hurry up. 15,000, I nearly fell off my chair. 15,000? I was looking at him and it was really bad actually because I was looking at him thinking, actually, I'm sitting here and I earn more than that and that's what you want to be. So I carried on, you know, we discussed how do you get from zero to 15,000. We put the plan in place and we were trying to make that work. I got back in my car and I kind of sat down and I had to kind of just think. Well, you tend to do that in a car. <laughs> um, you, I sat down and thought, actually, what he wants to do is become happy. He's not doing it for money. It's not about money for him. He just wants to be happy. He wants to enjoy something he does. He's got a part-time job and he wants to enjoy what he does. So when you measure success, it is not just about money. Ideally, yes, it's nice to have money, but it's better to be proud of what you're, in, you're doing it for in the first place and where you're ending up. Does the past shape it? Well, you know, if you talk, I can't talk about your past, I can only talk about mine. So in my kind of story, so, my early years, between the ages of one to seven years old, I suffered from epilepsy. I missed about four or five years of school. <coughs> this really doesn't sound like me. I actually used to cry because I wanted to go to school. Uh, people that know me will know that's a long, they probably just think they probably never met me really, because that's not something that's inbuilt in me. But I actually used to cry because I wanted to go to school. My parents would drop me off, and then about 15, later, 15 minutes later, I'd have an epileptic fit, and I'd be called back and I'd have to go home again and then I'd be crying because I wanted to stay, yeah? At the weekends, I used to go to my teacher's house, which was kind of, a, which was arranged by the school, everyone. It was arranged by the school. <laughs> it was allowed them days. And catch up on all the work I used to miss. Now, when I look at myself then, I think, wow, that was me. I missed four or five years, but by the age of nine, I'd actually caught up, and in some things, I was actually better than what I was, what I was meant to be. So, I was quite, you know, when I look at it now, I think, wow, you know, you've done something amazing. But what did I do for the rest of the time? You know, the wasted years. And I don't mean just drinking. But what I mean by the wasted years, I mean 
from the age of, say, what, secondary school, to college, to another college, to university, I wasted it all. I had all the opportunities there. I should have been the person that was thinking, I wasted four or five years through illness. And then I just thought, I just took everything in my stride. The one time I was really happy when I went home, I think it was when I was in year nine, the one, that was the one time I was really happy and proud. Normally I, do, I used to have parents evening, but I'd only see one teacher because that was the only one I used to get on with. Yeah. I used to just cancel out everything else. But the one time I went home, the year nine maths exam, which decides the next two years in your GCSEs that you're in the top group and in the top set so you can try get a higher grade. I walked in at home, mum, dad, I've got my results. And they were like, okay. He never says that, he never tells us the results normally, we find out somewhere else. They said, okay, what did you get? He gave us the bad news and I was like, God, is that how I've been coming home every single time? Mum, Dad, I've got 97%. And in true Indian parents fashion, what happened to the other 3%? <laughs> I got angry, I muttered a few things in the word, and I stormed upstairs, and I started playing something on, 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 my, on my CD player. It, it kind of got to me that, why are they asking me for 3%? 3%? Who cares? I got 97%. Be proud of me. Stop making fun of me. Stop putting me down. No, that 3%, so in my head, that year, we actually went to America, and we went on the Friday, again, in true Indian style fashion, we saved money by going on the Friday. Um, but that, that's where that 3%, so I told my parents the 3% was on that day, because that's the day I had maths, and that's the lesson I missed. Yeah? That's the lesson I missed. That's a rubbish excuse. Why did I not, when I got back, find out what I'd missed? Why couldn't I, why couldn't I have done that? Yeah, why couldn't that extra 3%, that's all it was taking me. All I had to do, find out what I missed. That's all it was about, but I couldn't do it. And that's what I mean, I'm kind of just frittering my life away through uni, just casually, you know, okay, I got a 2-2. Two -two. You know, I should have got, probably got much more. If it was to do with student union, playing pool and snake bites, I probably would have got first, yeah? But that's not where I should have been. I should have been studying, I had the chance. I caught back, I had the hardest years of my life when I, was, when I was younger. It's not about that. So now, afterwards, when you kind of think about it and you look at yourself, what do I want to do and what do I enjoy doing? Well, it is now. This is what I enjoy doing. I like helping individuals who don't initially believe achieve. Because I don't want them to be like me. That's not who they're meant to be. Here's my previous job roles. Does anything shape you? You know? Yes, I've done the thing, got my GCSEs, got my A-levels, got my degree. That's what you're meant to do. Look at it. It's crazy. Yeah? That's everything I do. Is any of that a failure? Not really. It's all learning. Did I get sacked? Probably. Yeah, well, okay, I'll be honest. Yes, I did with some of them. <laughs> um, but recently, it's more redundancy, lack of funding, you know. But they're all learning examples. That's everything I've done. Somewhere in there is, if you can find it, is trainee retail sales officer to assistant sales floor manager. I ended up working when I was at uni at House of Fraser, Oxford Street. Tough years, years of my life. Assistant sales floor manager in ladies wear. Tough. It was tough. Um, <laughs> they were tough times. Don't laugh. Seriously. <laughs> every, day, every day next door I used to go for lunch. And uh, I used to go sit there and I thought, oh, this would be great in Leicester. This would be amazing. Yeah, whatever. Forget it. Who are you? You're just 21, you can't do it. Don't be stupid. I came back a year later, because um, I enjoyed my job so much. I came back to Leicester a year later, there was four of them. I came back the year after, there was 10 of them. Through other work I've done later on in business to business sales, I found out that all the subways in Leicester, the majority are only owned by a handful of people and they're multiple branch holders. Yeah, That could have been me. I wouldn't even try it now, it just costs so much. But that could have been me. Why did I put myself down? You know? And that's what I'm trying to explain. Don't be the Ricky I was then, when I was younger. Be the Ricky I'm trying to be now. And that's where you've got to all take. So the fundamentals of success. Finding your passion and believe. Yeah? You've got to believe in what you do. Find that self-reflection years. I should have done that a long time ago. You guys can do it now. 
you know, you guys can have a look at what you want to do, where you want to go, what you want to be. It is about now and taking that opportunity. Don't downplay anything. Yeah, don't downplay anything. I was helping someone recently with a CV. Um, she was 60 years old and she said, oh, I just was handling a bit of cash here and there. And I was like, no, that's called cash handling. And I gave the example. When I was working in the cinema, I had this great task of going into the toilets and checking the toilets and then signing my name every hour. I hated it. What's on my CV? Attention to detail. That's what it is. <laughs> Attention to detail. <laughs> Over time and through all them jobs, you get to the stage where Attention to detail, you have different examples to give. But don't downplay anything you can do because all the skill sets that you have in, whatever, in any of your roles or whether it's learning or whether it's employment, you can adapt them anywhere. You've just got to make sure you believe in what you're, what you're doing. Yeah? And give 100%. Seize the opportunity. It is definitely about seizing the opportunity, making things happen. I deliver you know, to people long-term and employed. I deliver to ex-offenders, I was at Feltham uh, Youth Offenders Institute last year and I wanted to quit because it was so tough but I just carried on for that one week yeah? you just seize the opportunity, you take the risk, you take the chance and you make it happen yeah? okay, maybe not in the case of the one guy in Chesterfield who said to me I want to become a window cleaner I've been on long, long term unemployed and then I go, so what's stopping you? he goes, vertigo and I was like, okay, <laughs> let's get over that first and then you can come back to me, yeah? But I also meet people that say to me, I don't want to know anything, I'm not going to tell you my business idea. It's like, why have you come to a business support workshop where I tell you how to increase your business? I'm not going to tell you nothing. Okay, so how do I help? I'm not telling you nothing. What's your name? I'm not telling you nothing. Okay, this is going to be a bit boring. Share your ideas with the right people. The people that can help you on the journey of what you, where you're meant to go. Otherwise, what's the point? If you keep it inside, how are you going to get anywhere? Yeah? Increase that network. Look, today, great opportunity. Lots of different people. Some people will know each other, some people won't. You get to network. Events like this, again, you get to network. And the other thing is, enjoy your success. So, will you be a success the day after tomorrow? Well. I'll be honest, I don't really know. But what I'm trying to say is make sure you're prepared to be a success. Be in the position to celebrate success. Yeah? Because that's what's going to make you. And actually, that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. Um, what I'd like to do is um, open up the floor now to... Um, for to our three speakers, um, hopefully. Well, I was going to say, I don't know if you want to come. Do you want to come and invite you onto the floor? So. Um.